If you tell a lie enough times, eventually you'll get some people to actually believe it. And of course, this has been happening with Donald Trump for years. So if you think all the way back to 2015, when Donald Trump came down the golden escalator and went ahead and announced his run for presidency, he went from vaunted real estate mogul and beloved TV star to hated, horrible, terrible, bigoted, racist Donald Trump. And of course, these lies have been spread and percolated through the system by the mainstream media for years so that now they are simply just accepted as fact by the left, right? The basis of any conversation is clearly Donald Trump is a racist, so obviously he has to be destroyed. Now, what we're going to see here today is a segment on The View where those cackling harpies basically do exactly what we're talking about. There's false allegations, there's lies, and we're going to go ahead and pick them all apart as we go through this video, so let's check it out. He's running on racism and revenge. Is that a winning platform or have most people started to get numb to what's coming out of his mouth? Well, I'm not numb to it. I don't feel like I'm living in hell, but I feel like he is hellish. Um, you know, he was speaking at the Black Conservative Federation's annual awards gala. About 500 Republicans were at the gala. The four black people that were there. Uh, Tim Scott, um, Ben Carson, Byron Reynolds, and apparently there was one, Donald's, uh, apparently there was one black person in the audience. And, and so I'm not sure uh, who he was speaking to, but I know that as of 2022, 1% of black voters cast, only 1% of black voters cast votes for Republican candidates. Mm -hmm. So his message is not resonating uh, with black uh, voters in the way on the that heels the of that media, powered speech, I don't yeah, understand. It's so <laughs> shocking in the way that media um, is trying to say. All right, so let's jump in right here for a second. So the first thing she says is that, yes, Donald Trump apparently spoke somewhere where there were four black people present. And if we come over here to our live feed of that very same speech, we're going to watch the camera pan for a second. As the camera pans past, you're going to go ahead and notice that, yes, this audience is clearly half black at least. All right. So whatever Sonny Hostin is talking about doesn't make any sense. All right. Donald Trump has a big black audience, much more than any other Republican. And of course, that brings us to our second point. All right. She says, notice the, the word usage to use. She says Republicans have 2% black support. Now, honestly, that is true. But Donald Trump always outpaces Republicans in his support of black voters. So let's go ahead and check this out over here. We have from Howard University, Joe Biden's poll numbers are down at 49 percent. All right. And then, of course, you have Donald Trump, who could be as high as 26 percent, according to this poll. And this poll just came out, I believe, two days ago. Now, of course, is his support going to be this high? Not necessarily. But Donald Trump has always tracked well above the Republican average. All the way back in 2016, I believe he had 4 percent support. And then in 2020, it jumped up to around 9 percent. And now here we are in 2024. And you hear anything from like 14 percent to 25, in this case, 26 percent. That that is a huge jump up in support, no matter what poll you're looking at. So I don't know what Sonny Hostin is trying to do, but that's why, as a lawyer, I suppose, she used that clever wordplay to say that black supporting Republicans, as opposed to black supporting Donald Trump, who's the person they happen to be talking about. Um, he's also dined with white supremacists. He said that there were many pe fine people on both sides after a deadly white supremacist riot. He called countries like Haiti. Can I say the word? No, Brian, I've tried before. You can say that either. Yes, I, it, it's been said. Okay. It so this is, in my opinion, the biggest and most easily disproven lie the left tells, all right? And that is the fact that Donald Trump supposedly, referring to the tragedy in Charlottesville, he said that neo-Nazis and white supremacists, there were good people in that crowd. When, as a matter of fact, that is not what he said. And if you look at the full clip in full context, he said exactly the opposite. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. Well, no, George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? 
How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now, are we going to take down his statue? So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? And the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. So traveling back in time to that period, you had roving gangs tearing down statues. And of course, this movement became so big that you had then city councils coming out and deciding to tear down statues. So historical figures, whether you agreed with them or not, they were important to those cities and of course, as landmarks to the time they were put up. And many people didn't want them taken down. But all people cared about at that point in time was a simple fact that Donald Trump said there were good people on both sides, which is entirely true and accurate. And notice his complete disavowal of the white supremacist nationalists, right? That's the part the left always conveniently leaves out. Donald Trump was talking about the people who were protesting the removal of statues. And guess what? The other side was full of what we now know to be Antifa, right? That horrible terrorist organization that, of course, roams the streets in leftist cities, taking over entire city blocks. But also, one of the charges against Trump there, the way you prove you actually know he's racist, is he called Haiti a crap hole country. I don't really curse, so I'm just gonna call it a crap hole country. And now why in the world would he do that? Could it be because the gangs have taken over the cities so much that they are easily fighting back against the military and the police and the citizens are basically being ravaged by these horrible roving gangs? That to me sounds like a crap whole country. But for some reason, when Donald Trump says it, oh, I can't believe he would disparage the entire nation of Haiti. Yeah, because they're in horrible turmoil right now. And if you go there, you're probably going to end up getting killed. So stay away from those crap whole nations. He is, uh, according to many people, a racist. And so running on a racist running on racism. Um, Just like work. the old days. Yeah. Well, he's a racist, according to me. Uh, because when I, you know, when I hear him say the the stuff he says, and you know, last week it was reported that Joe Biden uh, had told his staff to lean into and highlight the crazy stuff that Donald Trump says, and they should do it, and they should do it every day. There should be like an early morning report from the Biden campaign of the crazy stuff. Trump said that day, there is no shortage of it. All right, Anna Navarro, according to her, Trump is a racist full stop, all right? Well, why don't you give us some examples of these crazy things that you should be noting every single day that Trump says? Pull out the laundry list, please. Tell us right now, in full context, right? The first 10 seconds, the last 10 seconds, and of course, the space right in the middle. Go ahead and give that to us. We are waiting for that evidence, but I'm not gonna hold my breath to actually get it. Now, let's go ahead and give Whoopi Goldberg the last word of this scenario. It is not a shock. I've seen what's gone on in the country in the last several years and the things that people have been trying to take away. So this is not surprising to me. Um, and it has never been surprising. Everybody who lived here knew what he was when he got elected. We were trying to tell everybody. And every time somebody said, hey, this is really not a good idea, people got pissed off. Now you know. So it's up to you. This is in your hands. So either that's who you want for president or it isn't. We will be the ones making the decision, Whoopi. Yes, we will. And as you can see, people are making that decision because right now in these latest polls, you can see that Donald Trump is in fact still leading against Joe Biden nationwide. That's popular vote. Never mind the Electoral College where Joe Biden is being just trounced completely. So all of these attacks on Donald Trump are wearing thin because people recognize the lies that have been present for so long. And of course, it also helps that Joe Biden is so unliked. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And as usual, stay safe out there, people, because they're coming after you.